everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm making a gluten-free chicken pot pie casserole. If you guys want to know how to make this, hit that subscribe button and watch me cook. Let's start by preheating our oven to 450 degrees. We're going to use four cups of shredded hash browns with a third cup of melted butter. And the first thing we're going to do is grab those hash browns, put them in a paper towel and let them thaw for a few hours. After letting it sit out for a few hours, go ahead and squeeze out as much water as possible. We want this as dry as we can get it. Once that's done, go ahead and place it into a 8x8 or 9x9 casserole dish and pour your melted butter right on top of it. Using my fork, I mixed up what I could with the butter and the hash browns as well as I could. This will give this a nice little buttery flavor to it. Once you're done blending up your butter and your hash brown mixture, I'm going to divide it in half, or at least as close to half as I can possibly get it. And I'm gonna save that and set it aside for my crust on top. But for the rest of it, I'm going to spread it out as evenly as possible and as level and flat as I can get it. And I'm gonna smash all the potatoes in there to make my crust. I did this just because I didn't want to use pie crust or have to make pie crust because of the gluten sensitivity that I have. And so, I mean, you make quiche with pie, well, potato crust. So why not try making it with a chicken pot pie recipe? I don't know. It all made sense to me. In my head, it made sense to me when I, when I decided to try making this. By the way, yes, this is the first time I'm trying doing this. So <laughs> now you know. All right, once this is done, all you're going to do is pop it into your oven and bake it for 25 minutes so we can make our crust. Now for our filling. I just used the ingredients that I listed right there, poured them all into a saucepan, and I just let it, because the chicken is already cooked and pretty much everything's cooked, all I'm letting it do is heat up inside of the pot. I didn't use chopped onions this time because I was feeling lazy and I didn't feel like dicing up any onions, but of course do so if you'd like to. The list of ingredients I use for the filling is just what I had on hand that I'm just trying to clean up my freezer with. So use whatever it is that you'd like or whatever preferred vegetable it is that you would like in your filling. I wouldn't skip out on the poultry seasoning unless you have a better seasoning for that. But I did use that. Use salt and pepper to taste. I forgot to add mine, but my kids said it was fantastic. So win-win. And in case you didn't know, there is a gluten-free cream of chicken soup that you can purchase from your local grocery store. Just keep an eye out for it and when you find it you can use that in place of it to keep this whole entire recipe gluten free. Alright now that everything is inside of our pot, I went ahead and turned my heat to a medium high heat setting and gave everything a good mix. Once I'm done mixing it, I'm just going to let it sit there and let it stay heated on top of the stove with the heat off until my crust is done baking. It's been about 25 minutes, so I went ahead and reduced my oven temperature to 350 degrees and pulled out my casserole dish carefully because it is going to be super hot. But doesn't our potato crust look pretty good? I mean, you already add potatoes inside of your filling, so why not use it as the crust? It only made sense to me. <laughs> okay, so now all we're doing is just pouring our filling right on top of the potato pie crust. I am just spreading it out as evenly as I can just to make it all nice and level. And then grab your hash brown mix that we made earlier and just pour that right on top. Remember, this is a potato hash brown pie crust. So this isn't going to be as crispy or flaky as the actual pie crust because it is a hash brown. If you want that texture, go ahead and fry up your hash browns first and then place it right on top. Once your oven temperature has reduced to about 350 degrees, go ahead and pop this right back into the oven and bake this for 20 minutes. This was enough to serve my family of four. Everybody gave this a thumbs up, so we were very satisfied with this dinner. If you guys like this recipe, please hit subscribe. And until the next meal, thank you for watching Watch Me Cook.